Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss carbohydrates, major energy sources for dairy cattle. When we look at carbohydrates, we can look at first how we define a carbohydrate. It is defined by the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. Many times in biochem class, you will also see it referred to as a ratio of 6 to 12 to 6, which is the normal ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen for glucose, one of the primary carbohydrates in the food chain. However, when we look at dairy cattle, there are two classifications of carbohydrates. One would we call the cell wall. The cell wall is lower in digestibility and high in fiber and increases as plants mature. In the cell wall, you will find such things as acid detergent fiber, also referred to as ADF, and neutral detergent fiber, or NDF, and lignin. The other major component of carbohydrates is the cell contents, also referred to as NFC, or non-fiber carbohydrate. The cell contents are high in digestibility and low in fiber, and contain such things as sugar, starch, organic acids, and pectin. This diagram of a plant cell shows where these components are found. You can see on the outside, highlighted in yellow, green, and white would be the cell wall. Cellulose is indicated by the green band, lignin, the white area in the middle, and hemicellulose. As a plant increases in maturity, this total cell wall gets thicker, and lignin actually gets wider as well. As you'll hear later, very low in digestibility. You can see from this slide the relationship of ADF and NDF. Inside the cell wall is the cell contents, or all the goodies. This is what you and I would eat each day. Protein, sugar, fat, starches, pectins, and some minerals. Let's look at each of these major breakdowns. The first one is cell contents, referred to in the dairy industry as NFC, or non-fiber carbohydrate. This is a calculated number. And we get that by taking 100, or 100% dry matter, subtract from it the percent crude protein, the percent NDF, the percent ash, and the percent fat. Another term is NSC, non-structural carbohydrates. And this is normally analyzed in the lab for sugars and starches primarily. Let's now break down the NFC fractions. The first one we'll discuss is organic acids. Organic acids are produced during the fermentation of silages primarily. The major acids would be lactic acid and acetic acid, and a well-fermented silage can contain 5 to 7% organic acid. If we mix half forages and half concentrates, you can quickly see that the total ration dry matter, if it's all coming from silages, may contain 2 to 4% organic acids. The key point on this fraction is these carbohydrates have been used or fermented by the bacteria in the silo and converted over to VFAs, which the cow can absorb. But the rumen bacteria cannot use it twice, and as a result, they do not have a source of readily fermentable carbohydrate as analyzed in our procedure. Another fraction would be the sugar fraction. Sugars are rapidly fermented in the rumen. According to the new NRC, this rate can vary from 200 to 400% per hour, extremely fast, and this fermentation results in high levels of propionic acid or propionate. The recommended levels of sugar in high-producing dairy cow rations is 2 to 4% of the total ration dry matter. Sources of sugar could include molasses, actual sugar, bakery waste, certain types of candy, whey, lactose, and feed-grade starch that is extremely finely processed less than 500 microns. The key point on this one is that these sugars can rapidly jumpstart the fermentation as it is rapidly and quickly available in the rumen, but also can cause rumen acidosis if we are at excessively high levels. Another fraction is the starch fraction. The rate of fermentation in the rumen will vary depending on its source and how we would process the starch. Also, the extent of fermentation of starch in the rumen varies from 60% for sorghum and corn to as high as 90% for wheat and barley. The recommended level of starch in the high-producing dairy cow ration will vary from 25 to 30% depending on other ration factors. Here the key point is, 
careful management is needed to optimize rumen performance and fermentation while avoiding or minimizing metabolic risks and acidosis. Such things to manage will be the level of starch, its form, the fiber level, the fiber form, the feeding system, fat level, and fat type. This slide shows the relationship on how fast or slow starches will go depending on its source and form. So on this slide you can see the slow starches are sorghum and corn, where the really rapid ones are wheat and barley. On the right side we can see how processing changes the rate as well. The slow carbohydrate would be dry and whole or rolled grains versus fast ones which would be high moisture and steam flake. So you can see how managers can vary source and form to dictate rumen performance. Finally, let's talk about pectin, or soluble fiber in the rumen. This is considered part of the cell wall, but it is included in the non-fiber carbohydrate fraction because it is rapidly fermented in the rumen. The neat thing is that it results in a fiber fermentation pattern, meaning acetic acid, not propionic acid. Sources of pectin or soluble fiber would include alfalfa, beet pulp, grasses, and citrus pulp. Suggested or typical levels in the ration could vary from 2 to 4 percent or slightly higher depending on what part of the country and what feedstuffs are economically available. Again, the key point here is rapidly fermented carbohydrates without the risks of high levels of starch feeding and acidosis resulting in more acetic acid instead of propionic acid. This table is from the new dairy NRC, which illustrates the tremendous variation in the non-fiber carbohydrate fractions. Let's look at a few of these. Alfalfa haylage that has been well fermented will have no sugar because the silobacteria have utilized the sugar and extremely high and volatile fatty acids, such as acetic and lactic acid. If we look at a dry forage, such as grass hay, notice now there is no VFA, but a fairly good source of sugar. So how we in silo handle the forage really dictates what the bacteria see and can consume. Notice corn silage and corn grain, extremely high sources of starch in the rumen that will vary depending on how it's processed and how wet the grain would be. Look at beet pulp and soy hulls, extremely excellent sources of pectin, a different type of non-fiber carbohydrate in the ration. So now you can see as a dairy manager and nutritionist how you can mix and match these various NFC fractions depending on the feedstuff you decide to put in the ration. Let's now go to our other major breakdown and that is cell wall consisting of neutral detergent fiber or NDF and acid detergent fiber or ADF. Another breakdown is neutral detergent fiber or NDF. Sources would include hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin. The key factor is that NDF is related to dry matter intake or fill. As cows eat high levels of NDF, they can't eat as much feed as they have low levels of NDF. The hemicellulose is fairly high in digestibility. This is good fiber, with varying from 50 to 70 percent digestibility depending on its source and how it is processed, and typically will vary from 10 to 12 percent in the total ration dry matter for lactating cows. Cellulose is much lower in digestibility, varying from 30 to 40 percent, and is found in ranges from 15 to 18 percent in the total ration dry matter. The bad fiber is lignin. Lignin has zero digestibility and can lock up other nutrients. Therefore, we don't want high levels of lignin in the total ration dry matter. Sources of ADF include cellulose and lignin, and its high level will lower digestibility in the ration. When calculating fiber values, we can quickly get an idea of these various fractions by difference or by analysis. To determine hemicellulose, we would take the percent of NDF and subtract the percent ADF. If you want to calculate the amount of cellulose in the ration, you would take the ADF fraction and subtract from it the amount of or percent of lignin. If you want to determine how much lignin we have in the ration, we would take the ADF fraction and treat it with sulfuric acid, and that fraction that is not solubilized would be considered lignin or very low in digestibility. Again, we go back to the NRC and look at the variation from feedstuffs and different carbohydrates. Again, we have NDF, which would be the cell wall, and NFC, which would be the cell contents. And again, look at the tremendous variation 
on silages, corn silages, grains, and byproduct feeds, which again shows the tremendous challenge you nutritionists and farmers have in balancing carbohydrate for the high-producing dairy cow. This summarizes our discussion on carbohydrates. Thanks, and have a good day.